Hey everybody, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about three reasons why gold is relevant today. It's a topic that I'm really excited to share with you guys, so let's dive in. One of the greatest misconceptions when it comes to precious metals investing is that it's primarily a passive investment type. In other words, someone might think, Sure, some gold might be a decent way for me to diversify in general, but for now, I just want to focus on more active trading, something that will help me generate income first or something like that. Well, while it's true that gold, at least in its physical form, shouldn't be approached as an income-generating asset, that does not mean that it is passive. In fact, gold is actually active. So that's our first reason for today. Gold is active not passive. Let me explain why. Gold is something that is referred to as a quote-unquote hard asset. It's something that has intrinsic value. Now, if you want to learn more about why that is true, you can check out the link in the description to hear a podcast that I did a while back explaining why it has intrinsic value. Now, that intrinsic value retains the purchasing power of the money that you invest into it. In other words, when you spend $1,500 on gold, that $1,500 has now been converted into this hard asset with intrinsic value. When that asset increases in value, because let's say uh, inflation is on the rise or something like that, it's almost like having a savings account that adjusts for inflation over time. Wouldn't that be really cool if your savings account could actually do that? The interest on your savings account will never outpace inflation, at least under the current monetary policies of our central bank, the Federal Reserve. However, gold can pace with inflation, and in fact, usually it outpaces it in some circumstances, which will give you the leverage in fighting that inflation. Gold is not passive. In fact, it helps you actively by offsetting that inflation over time. So that's reason number one. Gold is active, not passive. Reason number two is that gold transcends currency. Now, naturally, since gold has the intrinsic value that we just mentioned, this natural element quite literally transcends currency as we understand it. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, for starters, currency and money are two totally different things, but their difference is pretty subtle. You see, there's a set criteria that's necessary to properly define money, but currency is missing one of those elements. And that element is that it has to be a store of value over long periods of time. For example, when you paid $1.50 for a dozen eggs back in 2021, and then two years later, you're paying over $4.50, you're paying with currency, not money, because the purchasing power was not maintained during that time. Money, in the most ancient traditional sense, is a true store of value, and that's where gold comes into play. Gold can hold its intrinsic value regardless of what happens in the market or the economy, but our U.S. dollars, on the other hand, which are a form of currency, they're up and down all the time. Now, you might ask, yeah, but look at a gold chart. It's all over the place, too. And you're right. That is true. But you know why that's the case? It's because it's currently traded in U.S. dollars. In other words, it's the dollars that are moving all over the place, not necessarily gold. Now, I personally don't even like referring to gold as a quote-unquote investment, at least in the traditional sense, because by definition, investments carry risk and they carry the potential for yield. Physical gold as a natural resource from the crust of the earth does not carry those things. Now, this is why gold transcends currency, because even if the dollar vanished out of thin air tomorrow, gold would still have as much intrinsic value as it does right now. So that's reason number two, gold transcends currency because it's not currency. It's money, and it's money as money has historically been defined. Reason number three, gold transcends culture. Now, this final point sounds a little abstract, but it's actually concrete, and I'll explain why. Throughout human history, regardless of cultural differences across civilizations, regardless of economic structures, desires, goals, Gold has always been an accepted medium of exchange. In other words, you can look at cultures today and you can find some significant ones that have a disdain for our U.S. dollar. They hate it. They don't want to use it at all. However, you could take some fractional American gold eagle coins into those same cultures and even while bearing the motto, United States of America, they won't care about them because it's gold, and gold is real money with real value. Now, they may melt it down and put their own motto on it, but that's beside the point. The point is, when you invest in physical, tangible gold, you have leverage in your pocket that transcends cultural barriers and can act as a trusted source of exchange. That has been true for all of human history, and it will remain true forever. Now, you might think, 
being a little bit optimistic there. But let me ask you the question. Why are all of the fiat money proponents that also happen to be our central bankers around the world increasing their gold reserves year after year? I'll just leave you with that one for now. But just remember, gold is just as relevant today as it has ever been. Why is that? Well, to summarize everything we've talked about, it is active, it's not passive, it transcends currency, and finally, it transcends culture. That's it for now, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you want to learn more about how to become a proficient metals investor, check out the links in the description below. You guys have a good one.